marker, targets have roll call. Ms. Arnold. Here. Ms. Hunt. Here. Mr. Morrison. Here. Mr. Arnold. Here. Mr. Taylor. Here. You have a floor. Please stand for the pledge.
with uh, Mrs. Finley today, and we do have an upcoming visit from the other people, so I'm going to sit in on that. And after that, if there are some policies in there that I think you know, need somebody else's input, I might ask some of the board members um, to take a look, give me their comments or whatever, but I'm just going to take that on and get it started. So that's my report. Thank you. And I'm talking about performing arts, all oh, lots of good things. I love it. So let me start with um, last week. Um, Connections, they were down in Cincinnati, Loveland, and Connections came in first place. Oh, Connections. Friends came in second out of 14, but that's really coming in first. So that's fabulous. We have incredible students, we really do. And teachers, this <coughs> Monday, um, February 22nd, Beaver Creek High School, band concert, 6 o'clock. I'll be there, and I'm sure all of you will be too. But you don't want to miss it. They're amazing. And then <coughs> March 3rd, 4th, and 5th, it's our weekend of jazz. I'm sure you're seeing these signs all over Beaver Creek. That is an amazing, amazing weekend. And just let me tell you a little bit about it. It's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So Thursday night starts at 6.30. There are free concerts by Ankeny and Coy Middle School Jazz Bands and Beaver Creek High School Jazz 1, 2, and 3. Friday night starting at 8 p.m. is the Gordon <coughs> Women's Big Fat Band. They're going to perform Saturday from 8 a.m. Yeah, a.m. to 5 p.m. There are free concerts by 21 school jazz bands from all over the region. And then at 8 a.m. Saturday, Gordon Owens Big Fat Band returns to the stage. So if you have not gotten your tickets yet, you go to weekendofjazz.org for all the information. I have been to these, this every year, this event, and it is amazing. I'm going to tell you, I never liked jazz before, ever. It's like, really, no. Until I heard our jazz bands, and that has totally turned me onto jazz because they are amazing. I mean, they even compose some of their own pieces, and that is just unbelievable. So, and I have one more thing, you know, the kids in our district, as well as the teachers, are beyond amazing. I would like to share this email I received from a parent who was moved out of the state, and it says, my family moved from Beaver Creek last July to Mansfield, Arkansas. My daughter, Alex, 10th grade, joined Mansfield's choir. It was then that we realized what an excellent music program and teachers that Beaver Creek possesses. My daughter was a part of choir and show choir in Beaver Creek. Mr. Eddie King, Mrs. Smith, and any other teachers who participated should be commended for doing such a great job. It should not be taken for granted that all music teachers are capable of bringing out the best in their students. Alex made seventh chair in the All-State Choir. She was the only capital letter student from our new town to even qualify to try out. Would you please pass on my thanks and praise to those amazing teachers involved. So I would love to hear you speak to you. Would you, I, I, I 
What? What? Yes, we sort of do. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Cindy, Cindy asked me an announcement to the board. It's a weird class thing, and running. we were talking and I did. I am so sorry. I have a blank thing. I was running late, and I didn't, I didn't even get a chance to get my name on before I had to run in here. Well, we're glad you're here, so I have to tell you, you know, so. you have to list your name and address. Okay, you have three minutes to speak. All right, Cindy Reese, 1599 Turnbull Road, in Beaver Creek. Um, um, two things. First of all, the basketball, the boys basketball, I am like the fitness team mom this year for the basketball team. And we did have two boys who were selected for the G-Walk um, division teams, so which was a great honor um, for John Alessandro and uh, Jackson back um, for that. So second of all, I just wanted to give a quick shout out. We have businesses in Beaver Creek who are donating food and snacks to these boys on a constant basis. So just a real quick shout out to Olive Garden and BW3s and Kroger's and just to make sure, and Milano's who have contributed and donated food and drink to our boys and helping them bond as teams. So that's all I've got. Shout out. Thank you. That's Thank you. Great. That is wonderful. Thank you. to 
work with the city to have sidewalks put in or increased lighting or pathways, those kind of things. But there are also the non-infrastructure projects, which include education, encouragement, um, enforcement, and evaluating our plan. Basically, once the committee comes up with a plan, once we have looked at all of um, the options, what are things that we could do to make this better for our kids, we submit the plan to the Ohio Department of Transportation, and once it is approved by them, then we will come back to the community and present it and see if the community will support such a plan. Then the city pays for it up front, and then they are reimbursed. So it's reimbursement. So we just wanted you to know that we have been contacting parents and asking their input, and this is something that will be good for our school district, and it won't cost you anything at all. <laughs> and thank you for volunteering to do this. Yeah, yeah. It's a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, our presentation, we have uh, Mr. Shen, who is a valued member of the Advocacy Committee. The Advocacy Committee is a grassroots committee that was started about five years ago. And it keeps an eye on things that are happening in Columbus, a legislative update specifically one of the concerns has always been finding us, been very active in reaching out to our legislators and bringing them information from Beaver Creek Schools and what legislation might impact either positively or negatively Beaver Creek Schools. And Mr. Shedd would like to present a resolution for your consideration of the board approval at the March 4th meeting. And I don't have to sign in this time. <laughs> I believe, you know, that we have had an advocacy committee for, that was formed about five years ago solely for the purpose of exploring the possibility of finding other revenue streams to fund Beaver Creek City Schools. We know that the state hasn't been equitable in their stance to fund all of the state's 613 school districts, and basically Beaver Creek has to repeatedly ask for renewal or new money to provide for the added expenses of ever-increasing costs of educating our students and our increasing student population. We have looked at various means to address this situation, and I know that Nick Lundy and Peg Arnold have kept you informed, and as have Dr. Lundy and Mrs. Rucker. The reason that I'm here now is to encourage you to act on the letter that you have in your board packet. I'm sure you know that several districts have sent letters to the state legislators, including Fairborn and Xenia, requesting the state to reimburse them for the money that has been taken from their local budgets to fund charter schools, many of which are managed poorly and are proving to have failed and educate, to educate their students adequately. Ms. Mrs. Redford researched the amount that has been taken from our district's budget since 2006, and it is almost $13 million. We are asking you to sign this letter to let the state know that once again, they are penalizing local districts and that they need to find another revenue stream to keep charter schools viable. We aren't denying the need for them. In some instances, they're necessary. But they're just not the necessity to take, it's not the necessity to take from the pool of money designated to public schools. Needless to say, to say I could go on and on about the burdensome ways schools are funded in the state of Ohio. But by sending this letter to the legislators, we feel as a district, you are putting them on notice that we aren't happy with the situation. Let's face it, the more districts that contact them, hopefully the legislators will address it. At the very least, we are on record showing our discontent with the unsatisfactory way that our district being defunded to support charter schools. Thank you for your time this evening, and we will continue our pursuit of finding alternative ways to find monies to keep our district a great place to be educated. If you have any questions, there's a couple of us in the back there that would answer them for you. And if anybody here would like to see anything that I just said, there are there are reasons why we need to keep our money local instead of passing it on. Thank you, Mr. Shedd. I don't have a question, but I do have a comment. Yes. Thank you very much for coming tonight, and I think you hit it right on the head. Why should local taxpayers uh, pay for students to attend a charter school when the students are not achieving as well as they are in the public school system? So, thank you. And the majority of people don't even realize this. That's what's so sad. So thank you for bringing it to everyone's attention. That's I, I will be recommending that the March 17th meeting that we hold with the person of the board approve this resolution and we'll then be passing it out to our legislators for their uh, review. And next I will see the uh, third and final presentation as a curriculum update uh, presented by Dr. Susan Hayward and others. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to give you a curriculum update on Beaver Creek High School. I have three guests. 
Um, this evening, I have Mr. Jeff Jones, our high school principal. I have Mr. Sean Cook, um, a social studies teacher, and I have Mrs. Debbie Hermain, who is an English language arts teacher. So I'm going to ask Jeff to come up, and he's going to give you a presentation on the Bring Your Own Device Initiative at Beaver Creek High School. And then Mr. Cook and Mrs. Hermain, they're going to talk to you about the changes in course offerings for next year in social studies and um, English language arts. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. We're very grateful and proud to be here with my teammates from the high school. And uh, hopefully what we have for you uh, will be worthwhile and uh, entertaining for you. As she said, uh, we have our team here. All right, give me a second to adjust there. The part that I'm going to talk about tonight is BYOB. And what I will tell you is that uh, prior to my arrival here at Beaver Creek, um, I was very fortunate to be involved with not one of the two high schools that implemented this. So beginning back in 2008, I had an opportunity to start working on the process of introducing devices into schools in a meaningful way for students. I'm grateful for those experiences because I think it's really helpful in the process that we're going through right now with the high school. There's a lot of excitement, there's a lot of great energy over there for, for BYOD, and I've got some statistics hopefully that will, that will please you here at the end of my, my brother's presentation. Some things up there that uh, I'll just highlight for you. Obviously, this was a response from our community. Our community spoke out in a survey that said, look, we want to see our kids doing things that are meaningful for them for life after high school. Obviously, they are what are called digital natives. They have, since day one, been walking around like this. And I realized that day after day, my neck gets more and more sore the more I do this. So I can't imagine what my kids are going to feel like here when they are, are done with their school. But they're digital natives, and we have to respond because we, we have to do what's best for kids. And what's best for kids is to take those devices that they are so used to using and find meaningful ways for them to continue their education. It's much different than when I went to school. And then I sat in my rooms, I took my notes, I took my tests, and the person in front of me was the giver of information. Well, guess what? These things also very much are givers of information. Kids look stuff up all the time. And by the way, they're also reading all the time. You know, I know that it was tough for me as a kid to open a book. These things right here get our kids reading. It's really kind of neat. I, I know that this is a great process for our kids. I really believe that. Obviously, it provides the expanded access to the district network as well as digital tools, which I'm going to talk a little bit more here. But it also increases their academic studies and prepares them definitely for future opportunities. Quick aside, I'm grateful to Dr. Hayward and her team. They have been instrumental in helping us implement this particular process at our high school. There's a great team of folks who are willing to do whatever it takes to help us make sure the kids these devices in our hands. So thank you very much for that. So we did a great job, I think, given my experiences in researching what BYOD should mean to Beaver Creek. Implementing these kind of programs, you really have to understand your community. And I, we obviously have a great community with support from parents in that they have the ability to get kids devices. But at the same time, we also have some folks who had some questions about what if my kid doesn't have that type of device. The research we did, I think, was instrumental in the devices that we chose and giving kids choice and the ability to say, this device works best for me. <coughs> so I'm grateful for that research before we got here. Uh, we provided technology training to staff members and we're still in the process of doing that. Um, I will tell you that Microsoft Office 365, which is a product we'll talk a little about here in a moment, is going to be a great platform for our kids because it will allow them to do their work online. It will be a lot, it'll allow them to communicate online, allow them to do the things they're going to be expected to do like we do in our daily work. And it will be a great process for them. Um, a thank you to Mr. Schumann and his team for working on our ability to have devices on a network. I have worked in districts where, and, and the analogy I use is a straw. Well, the straw wasn't big enough some of the places I worked before where you couldn't get all the traffic through there. These guys did a great job getting us ready to handle all the devices and statistics at the end are gonna demonstrate how important that particular process was. Because don't think of it as a kid just with a Chromebook or an iPad, because guess what they got in their other hand because it's attached to them. It's that phone. So most times a student has got two devices going at the same time, if not more. They got an Apple Watch or those other kind of things. So, Thank you, Mr. Shin and his team for the great work behind the scenes. Um, I think we've done a great job communicating with parents, with students and community members, uh, with our vendor fair, giving folks the ability to come in and talk to people who know these devices and give them access to purchase them at a, at a, at a good price. 
Um, I also think we did a great job of posting information to our district's webpage, and those pages continue to evolve. You know, members of, of our team here do a great job of responding to questions and involving us at the high school to help message those things out. And as we get new information, then we go, ha, somebody else might have that question. We've done a great job, I think, in updating our frequent asked questions. This is Microsoft Office 365, and I, I, will, I will compare us to a district that I think we, um, we compete with on a regular basis, because I agree with you, our kids are incredible, and they can compete. Um, on Tangy Local Schools is dropping Google <coughs> as a process platform, and are going to install Microsoft Office 365. So when I watch the folks that I know we compete with on a regular basis are doing the things we're doing, that makes me feel good. It makes me go, okay, we're, we're doing stuff, and there are people following our lead on that. So, very grateful for that. The cool part for families to make is the fact they can download not one but two copies of the office products to the machine they designate in the home. The stuff that we use regularly to create documents or presentations or do spreadsheets, families have the ability to download that software because of the work that we've done and Mr. Schumann and his team have provided for them to have access to that all important tool that allows them to create and communicate what they know and are able to do. Another piece that comes with this that's been very important is visual citizenship. The footprint that you leave. Because as you well know, if you've dealt with social media, if you've dealt with any kind of email communication, what you say, once it goes out there, once you press send, it's permanent. And it represents you. And it represents us, it represents your family. And we've done, I think, an incredible job of talking to our kids about this. And saying, look, what you do matters. When you use Snapchat, you send something out there, it's now out there. When you use Twitter and boom, it's gone, and you tweet, tweet, it's out there. So what you say matters. So I, I think we've done an incredible job with saying, look, when you're, when you're with us, we want you to communicate. We want you to use those tools to leverage them for the good things they can do, while also saying, keep in mind, this stuff will resonate for a while. Things stay on the servers, and people do searches on you. Think about your future. Think about the things that you're going to do, all the great stuff you're going to do. Don't make one mistake in a moment where you just want to let someone know how you feel. But I think we've done a really good job with that. As well, um, again, with, with access to our district website and resources that are there, I think folks have a good place to start a conversation with us if they don't understand something. Well, maybe they get their answers. We hope that's the case. But otherwise, if not, we've given them good information to start a conversation. Um, as well, we've got some great network technicians who are giving us answers to, hey, my device doesn't pop on there. We've got folks in the library in the morning who are there just for the sole purpose of helping students get onto the network, which is awesome because everybody's all over the place with this. And you've got folks who know exactly what to do. Right, I mean, believe me, I hand my phone to kids all the time, including my own say, show me how to do this. We've got great people that are helping <coughs> kids who may not have budget. We may not know how to do this, we get them online, so we get them back into learning mode as fast as possible. So, as I referred to earlier, you can get devices online. If you bring your own device, we've done a great job with the process of being able to register those devices, because we do recognize that students will make mistakes from time to time. We have the ability to identify a problem and help a student understand the mistake, as well as you know, take care of any things that come from those mistakes as well by being able to identify those devices. So really happy with that. Um, and just in case you were wondering, this is obviously accessible both at the main building and the Ferguson Hall. And that network, like when I walk in and out, just like with my device, the kids, when they walk in and out with the devices from the two buildings, if they happen to say, be in the band required have to come over, the device automatically will hook up because it's the same network, which we appreciate that as well. I mentioned the choice of devices. Chromebooks and iPads are two very popular devices. Now, I won't, I won't lie to you, I'm really happy to see kids feeling comfortable to bring their own laptops in. And I see them in the morning when I come through in the cafeteria doing stuff online. It's incredible to see. It is so cool to see those kids in there working before school. But the fact is, is that the research that we did provided us with enough information to say Chromebooks are good, iPads are good, and the devices are flying off the shelves or out of the carts. It's incredible that the kids had a choice to feel comfortable with the device that they're using. One interesting aspect of that, I will say though, is that I know for me, I'm not always comfortable looking at my phone because of the size. And I bought the biggest one I get. My kids make fun of me all the time for what they call the tablet instead of the phone. But I'm still not comfortable necessarily doing the work on there. I can take notes, but it's not my choice to do that. Our kids are actually pretty good at and comfortable with that. 
I think that's been a learning curve for me. I'm just going to speak for myself and talk to a few of our teachers. I think some of them are just amazed that kids can actually do work on there. And we have to take a step back and get everything what's best for kids. We let them kind of tell us what's comfortable. They're okay using phones. I know sometimes we want to say, go get a Chromebook or go get an iPad. A lot of them can do it. And I, I think that's something that we as adults, we as the, the folks who are facilitating the learning, need to keep in mind. These kids are okay with a small screen. I mean, my neck doesn't like it, and my eyes don't like it, but for them it's okay. Okay, so some using statistics from month number one. This is incredible stuff. More than 60% of our students have connected a device to the network. If you say 2,600, 60% you're talking almost 1,500 kids. And you're talking more than one device at a time. So over 25% of our students are accessing the BYOD Wi-Fi network at any given time during the school day, which means a quarter of our kids are accessing a meaningful device to facilitate their learning, which is so Students are connecting with a variety of devices and platforms, and I mentioned laptops and tablets and other Wi-Fi enabled devices. I see kids with um, little, um, the, um, not phones, but their, their um, iPod, thank you. That they're able to bring those in and use them again. You know, I think some of those have faded because most kids got those. I've seen those. I think I've even seen a gaming system in there. The old uh, <laughs> PS uh, piece that they had. It's amazing what the kids will bring now that they have access to the network, because we've got to keep in mind, some of our folks might not have consistent access to a network either. So this, that's, that's really cool to me. Um, over 3,000 times devices have been checked out. And I can tell you this, I know our purpose is small, they've come close to running out. I want to say it was up. We came within five devices not having stuff with folks. So keep an eye on that. I know that I've walked up into our library, and those carts that are in the side room, if you're familiar with the library where we store that stuff, all the doors are open and they're all empty. Which is just awesome to see. And I will say this uh, in celebration of our library staff. They've done a great job adjusting to their new role, which is to help these kids get these devices. They have, they have, it's, it's been challenging, but they have been problem solvers and they work really, really hard to make sure our kids are getting what they need. And I really appreciate that because it is sometimes hard in the middle of the stream to add something. You're already busy, but they've done a great job of adjusting on the fly. So we appreciate that. So, with that said, that is what's going on in our high school with I am so proud of the fact that we are doing what's best for kids and meeting them where they're at and letting them help us decide how to best deliver the curriculum. And it helps their engagement, it helps their enthusiasm. And I know it's going to continue to push what is already a great product even further. So I appreciate very much the opportunity to speak about BYOD. So with that said, I would love to introduce a much more eloquent speaker. And probably about more enthusiastic and much more, uh, much more entertaining than I am in this room. Cook, one of the associates, which would be nice to be kind of thanks to Mr. Jones as well. I tell Mr. Jones on the way in, um, 19 years of teaching and beaver creating, this is the first time that I get to address the board, so kind of exciting. And I think, um, I think all of the board members have been in my classroom doing presentations, so here I am today in your classroom doing, doing a presentation. Um, I want to represent the high school social studies department and, and let you guys know what we've been working on and, and what we've been doing. Um, for, for several years now, we, we as teachers have been a little bit, um, I don't want to say upset, but I, it, our, our courses have been stale, kind of the same course over and over again. Um, a little bit for those that may not know at the high school, students will take a year-long ninth grade course. Um, in world history. And then in 10th grade, they'll do a year-long American history course. And in 11th grade, they take a year-long course. And then they have to take government their, their senior year. And um, a lot of the teachers, we were just thinking about this. And it's been going on for several years uh, that the students should have more of a choice on, on what they take. And, and as a history teacher, it's, I, I don't want to say scary, but everything's math science. Everything, we're going math science. And, and history gets left out of this. And, and it's hard. You have to convince um, students, parents, why is history important? Um, as Mr. Jones said, you know, students can look anything up on their phone now. So why do you need me to stand in front of a classroom when a kid can look it up on the phone and, and, and there's the answer? Uh, so we were thinking about having more courses, um, more electives, semester courses that are more specialized, where uh, a student, um, you look at our year-long world history course or our year-long United States history course, 
And we are covering so many topics and, and we're flying. We don't get in depth with many, many items. So with, with this you know, route that we're going to go, a student can have the choice on the topic that they're interested in and, and get a little more in depth with it. So last August, when I was finally recharged and ready to start thinking about school again, I had uh, come in and spoke with Dr. Hayward and, and, and said, you know, we really want some electives. We, we want to make this happen. And, and she's like, absolutely, Let, let's do it. Let's talk about it. Um, so what I wanted to do today was just kind of show you guys what we've come up with. I think you have a handout. Um, green, blue, red in front of you. And, and what this is, is a, a, a printout, if you will, of the courses that we came up with. Uh, our first step, we got together as social studies teachers in, in two groups. And we threw around the ideas. I mean, if you could have seen the whiteboard, we had every idea imaginable that we would like to teach a course. And, and we had discussions on uh, what would students be interested in? And you know, what would teachers be interested in in, in teaching, obviously? Uh, we went and observed other high schools in the area. Some of us went to Columbus high schools. Uh, I went to Kettering Fairmont and, and walked around and saw some of the courses. Um, over the summer, Dr. Hayward gave me a list of, of about 20 high schools in Ohio. She said, well, here you go. Research what courses they're offering. And, and I was sad, uh, and I'm sad to say, we didn't even come close to what these other schools were teaching. They had all kinds of electives, and, and we simply weren't offering these, these choices. Uh, so anyhow, we, we came up with a, with a ton of ideas. And, and so if, on, on the sheet, if you have it there in front of you, uh, the courses in blue are the, the new courses that we are going to, to begin offering. And then there are a few down there in green, and those are going to be rolled out, not next school year, but the year after. Um, one other thing that I wanted to mention to you guys, we also surveyed the students. We, we put together a survey with kind of our whiteboard on, on a survey, and we put that out to our students. And all the history teachers uh, put this on their web pages, and the students were able to take the survey. Um, we had uh, something like 700 uh, responses on this thing. Uh, and so we were able to break down, you know, percentage-wise what students were interested in. They're really interested in AP courses. I mean, I think you can put AP in front of basket weaving, and these kids would want to take it because it's an AP course. Um, we, we're going to go from offering three AP courses um, to next year we're going to be offering five AP courses. And uh, so we, we certainly got input from the students, and, and just we have all kinds of things. You know, a few of these, and, and certainly not going to go over all of these, but history through film, um, a semester course where they're looking at various topics in, in history and, and watching a film that corresponds to it. It's certainly not, we're going to watch movies every day. That's what my students were like, all oh, right, where was this? Class? I want to take this. Um, in Fairmont, what, what I observed, uh, they would actually study the topic first write a research paper, then they would watch the movie. And, and so um, another one is sports and society, which again, students are excited, oh my God, a sports class. Um, but what we're gonna look at and what we're hoping to teach the students is you know, what impact has, has sports had on, on American society? You look at somebody like Jackie Robinson and, and there's a new movie about to come out with Jesse Owens. And so that's another topic we can get into. My personal love, uh, the Civil War course, um, the American Civil War is generally considered the most popular topic in American history amongst American citizens. And our students at Beaver Creek High School, unless you were in the honors 10th grade class, nobody, nobody had the Civil War. The last time Beaver Creek kids studied the Civil War was 8th grade. And so I've always thought, and what, I've, what I have found is the older we get, the, the more into history we tend to get. And so for high school kids to not have the opportunity to study that, that um, huge part of American history, I, I thought was something that we needed to change. So to give you an idea of what's going to happen this year, we are offering um, five electives this school year. Next school year, there will be 11 electives that are going to be offered for the kids. So they're going to have a lot more of a choice, which was very important to us that the students would, we wanted to almost have a college field to, to where they would choose the topic they were interested in. Um, another big change for Beaver Creek High School is going to be government class, uh, which is a year long currently. 
most schools we found in the area, they're, they're doing it in a semester, uh, semester of government. So what we are going to attempt next year, um, we're going to offer it for a semester, and we're going to offer it for a year. For the kids that want to take it for a year, they'll have that choice. Uh, seniors next year that, that may say, wow, look at all these electives, and it's my last year in, in high school, perhaps they'll take a semester of government, and that's going to open up a semester for them to take one of these electives that we have created. Uh, this will certainly, which courses get taught next year, it, it's going to be up to, you know, registration, enrollment, obviously. Um, I'm sure that's about to start soon. Uh, and so we'll have a really good idea of what the students are interested in um, once they start scheduling for next school year. So I, I know I'm, I'm really excited for this. I know the history department, we're, we're really excited. Um, to get into some new courses where we, we have a curriculum meeting next Thursday where we're going to start actually writing curriculum for a lot of these courses. So um, hopefully you guys like the list you see and, and uh, the history department high school will just be even better next year. So. I saw that. Definitely. Civil good. War. Civil War is a great one. Yeah. Love Thank. American history, so. Great. Thank you for All right. this. this. Not a problem. It took 19 years to get here. You know, I have a wonderful opportunity for us. It is. It's, it's great. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.
As students chose these semester classes, these courses will pre be presented at either a 4.0 or a 4.5 weight scale. So that we will still have the what is known as general and scholarship classes. In addition, we are adding another advanced placement course, language and composition, which may be taken in junior year. Advanced placement courses have taken the place of honors in senior year, now it will be in the junior year. Um, they will have the opportunity to follow up this course senior year with literature and composition. Students taking AP classes may take the semester classes as electives, so they still have choice. Electives will now be available for 9th through 12th grades. We've added a couple extra to help prepare our students for college. One is um, strengthening composition, which will help students with their writing skills and develop their arguments for a variety of writing types and audiences. And we ha will have an ACT SAT prep course, which will help students prepare for these exams, which I think is something that they're really looking forward to taking. It is our firm belief that by providing students with choice, we can facilitate their motivation and their inspiration. Uh, this choice will be similar to what they ha will have in college, and students tend to feel more confident if we give them this freedom. We look forward to having our students excel in writing and prepared for college in this new as this new curriculum provides the rigor necessary to succeed. Hundreds of years ago when I was in high school, I had semester English classes, but I did not have semester social studies classes. And I have to say, I could not stand social studies and it wasn't until later in life that I developed a love for history. Um, I hate for our students to have to wait that long. Um, I looked forward to my uh, semester English classes because I made the choice to enroll in them. I still remember those classes today, and perhaps it was because of those classes and the teachers, it provided me with a love of writing and reading. And I hope that I have a strong enough love to want to share that with my students. Thank you. Thank you. 
January 2016 financial reports and donated items. One's on page 52 and one's on page 61. Oh, I need a motion. I 